Hi, you guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing, and today I wanna to talk to you about how to set up a stock market watch list of companies you wanna own and why everybody needs one of these nice lists. Hey, as a quick reminder, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notifications when I release new videos. One of the most important tools of Rule One Investing is a stock watch list. Danielle calls it a wish list in the book Invested. Let's take a look at what a stock watch list is, how to set one up, and the advantages that a stock watch list can provide to investors who wanna make use of one. A stock watch list is a list of companies that you have completed researching and you want to buy. So this is key. We want the stocks on your watch list to be companies you're done working on and you want to buy. Maybe that's why she calls it a wish list because we can have a load of lists, right, of companies we're doing research on and we're thinking about buying. But what I want and what I'm talking about here is that final list, let's call it a wish list, that is the five to 10 companies that you are ready to purchase, that you have done the work on, this list is gonna consist of companies that'll fit the criteria of an investment-worthy company, something that Warren Buffett would wanna buy. Maybe they're not on sale, but you know what price you're gonna pay. If you have the companies on this wish list, you're gonna know when they do go on sale at a price that's well below their value, and you're already gonna be ready to purchase them when that time comes. And that's what's so critical about having the wish list done ahead of time. Because let me tell you, when that list goes on sale, if you have not done your homework, you will be afraid to pull the trigger. And the reason you're gonna be afraid to pull the trigger is because what puts those companies on sale is fear. Fear of the economy stopping, fear of a huge re uh, recession, fear of whatever is what puts those stocks on sale. And you, my friends, are not immune to fear that's floating out there in every newspaper article, on every TV show. Everybody is telling you how bad things are. The truth about the stock market and the truth about the economy and the truth about newspapers is that they are just plain manic depressive. There's no other way to describe it. They, it's like when they're on their meds, they're sort of rational, but when they're not on their meds, these groups go nuts. They get manic, like nothing bad is ever gonna happen in the rest of the world ever, or they go completely depressed where never is the sun gonna come up. It's just gonna be horrible forever. And it feels like it just penetrates your body, it penetrates your spirit, and you get caught up in it, and pretty soon, all of those reasons that everybody is saying the stock market is so terrible start to come at you and you freeze up instead of pulling the trigger. Charlie Munger likes to say that <laughs> this style of investing is sloth bordering on, oh, it's laziness bordering on sloth. And then Charlie goes, and then we get really aggressive. So it's like we do nothing for long periods of time and then we get extremely aggressive. Okay, so we gotta be able to be extremely aggressive when everybody else is pulling back. And a really good wish list, one that's done really well, is the key to making that happen. So you don't use your emotions when the time comes. You know you've done your homework, and you know you wanna own this company for the next 10 years, and you know it's got a great moat, and you know it's got a great company that's been, or a great uh, management team, and you know what price to pay and then you pull the trigger. There's just no emotion involved. You just pull the trigger. Oh, it hit that price, pull the trigger. So here's what I'm, I'm thinking, is you've got basically two sides to this set of lists. The first list we're gonna call your wish list. That is gonna be the companies that are on your short list to buy. The rest of this we'll call watch list, and these are tentative. So your short list or, or your wish list is gonna consist of about mm, anywhere from one to 10 companies that you've thoroughly researched. These are companies that meet all your criteria, but they're priced too high right now to safely invest in, or they wouldn't be on your wish list, they'd be in your portfolio, all right? So the only thing difference between your portfolio and that wish list is price in the market. So putting them on your, uh, on your wish list says, I know what I'm doing, it's safe to invest in these companies at this price. Now, when you put companies on a watch list, 
That's basically saying, I want to do the research on these. I want to do the work here. So this is the second component. This is a kind of a tentative list. Now mine can have like a hundred companies on it that are being thrown at me over time, right? Somebody says, hey, this is a good one. You should take a look at it. It kind of just goes on to a list. So this tentative list or just watch list can be much, much longer than your wish list. And this consists of as many or as few companies as you wish. Companies that make up this list are companies that you have not thoroughly researched, but are on the list to be researched sometime in the future. And once you've had a chance to thoroughly research a company on this watch list, then you either move it to the too hard box or it just gets too hard and you're done, you're done working on it, or it's a no and you remove it from the watch list completely, um, or it goes over onto the wish list and becomes something you want to buy. So here's the thing. You got to make sure that you get these companies off that list as fast as possible. Stick stuff on the tentative list all you want, but remove them as quickly as possible. And the best way to do that is to focus, focus, focus on one at a time. All right. One at a time, because adding companies to your watch list obviously is boiling down to adding a lot more research. That's a big pile of work you're going to have to do. So, and here's the thing you add anything on you want to, but everything you put on there, ultimately you have to do the work and decide if it's going to get off the list or if it's going to go over the wish list. Now, in order to determine that, what I want to suggest to you is that you really be conscientious and disciplined about doing the research on stocks that are on that tentative list on the watch list, knock them out of there as fast as you can. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the company and see, is this something I can easily understand? Is this something that's well within my circle of competence? It's not something I've got to learn an entire new industry about. So I want to know that I can get to a reasonable answer on it in a reasonable period of time. For me, a reasonable period of time is about two weeks. Now, what I want to do is focus on that one company for a two week period straight through. Don't focus on any other companies. And that's hard to do. It takes discipline because as you're doing your research, you'll see other companies pop up. Maybe competitors might look better. So you just put those on the watch list and get to them when that's the appropriate time. And you stick to this one thing and grind at it. Just grind at it until it's gone, either gone to the wish list, gone to no, comes off the list completely, or it goes into the too hard box. So where are you going to find companies to put on your watch list, right? To just be tentative about Oh, they come from everywhere. You could use stock screeners like you can use the toolbox to screen for good moat companies. You can use lots of different stock screeners on lots of websites. You read articles, you read the Wall Street Journal, you read Barron's. You just put things on the list, put things on the list. One of the best strategies for finding companies to add to your watch list is a strategy known as coattailing. You know, I love that. Coattailing is basically cloning a great investor. It's just looking at what the world's most successful ruler type investors are buying and using that data to find companies that you yourself might be interested in buying. So in the investing world, this strategy is also known as following the smart money or following gurus. And these are investors like Warren Buffett, Monash Pabrai. These are people that I respect. Now, the key is there's 8,000 investors you can get uh, you can get filings on, but you want to narrow this down to just the ones that are going to be investing in great companies at great prices. Too many good investors, or I should say too many professional investors are just not well. They're not well educated on how to do investing. They're well educated on modern portfolio theory, totally different ballgame. The number of investors that do this the way I do, the way Buffett teaches it is just really a handful by comparison. There's more maybe 40 or 50 or so. And I've listed those on the toolbox and those are at the toolbox. You can get all of the stocks. Those guys are are looking at uh, as quickly as they've become available. But if you're not going to use that resource, then just be sure you focus on a couple of key things. Make sure that the investors that you're looking at that you're going to coattail that are buying a relatively small amount of stocks with relatively large amount of their portfolio. The criteria that I like to use is they should have 70% of their portfolio invested in their top 10 companies. And many of these guys have 70% invested in their top five. So if they're just doing, you know, 50 companies and investing, you know, 2% in each one, they might be a great investor, but 
it'd be really hard for us to know for sure that they're really committed to specific companies. I love it that Warren Buffett, for example, right now has 25% of his invested portfolio just in Apple, right? 25%. That's my kind of investor. So look for that. That's a big clue. Now, also, it doesn't mean even if you find that, that you should automatically purchase the companies that these guys are buying, right? So if Buffett's buying Apple, should you go buy Apple? No. It just gives you a reason to go add that company to your watch list and then do your research on it. You have to be able to reach an independent decision because it's not right to buy the stock because Buffett bought it and it's not wrong to buy it because he, he or, and not buy it because he bought it. It just doesn't matter. It's just an indicator that somebody good thinks this is good. And since there's so many companies out there, it's nice to have it narrowed down like that. Now, once you have your watch list in place, you got to focus on one company at a time. Like I said, you just dig in, dig in, dig in, dig in and do that research until you understand that business inside out. Now, by that, I mean, you're going to do these four things. OK, you're going to understand the business. You got to make sure you understand the business like I can understand burritos. So I'm pretty good about that, but I might not understand Intel and making chips too well. So I got to focus on the things I understand. So if I can't understand it, good, it goes to the two hard box done. If I can't understand it, I'm done. And then if I can't find the moat, oh my gosh, if I can't know that there's a durable competitive advantage, done. That's a no. And how do I know that? Go read the 10K, you guys. Just read the annual report and look at the competitive section where it says competition. Should be a statement right in there about how that company believes it's a durable competitive advantage to other companies. So you, you find first off, do I understand it? No, gone. Second, does it have a big moat? I can't find one. Gone. Third, do I trust the managers? This is harder, right? You got to be able to dig in and take a look at the people who are running that company. Do you like the way they are treating their employees? Are they passing through these gains that they've gotten from having uh, a big tax break from um, income tax? Are they passing that through to their employees? Are they making their employees wealthier as well? Do they believe in bringing the whole uh, employee community along with them? Or are they the kind of company you got to go get a trade union to get, get what you what you do? So I think you got to figure out, does the management team line up with your own values here? Does the company line up with your own values? And also be sure you're looking at debt. We don't want to buy companies that have big debts. Forget it, particularly coming in to a recession. When, when, when the economy starts to move out, Buffett says, when the tide goes out, then you get to see who's swimming naked. Well, mostly the companies that are swimming naked have debt and they go under. So be sure you look at these three things, right? You're going to look at, do I understand the business? Does it have a moat? Does it have a lot of debt? Just remove it. If you don't, if, in, if you have a, a lot of debt, it's out of there. And then finally, how do you value the business? We look at it through the 10 cap. We look at it through margin of safety. We look at it through the payback time. All of those are detailed in this book, Invested. If you don't know, go get it. Um, so if you find that we're somewhere, anywhere along the line, you run into a no, boom, it comes off the list, move on to the next company. So obviously, if you've got 100 companies on your list. You want to knock them off fast like that. Get rid of them. So after you find something, you've got I understand it. It's got a big moat, great management. It's on sale at this price. You put it over on your wish list. That's where it goes. OK, now you just leave it there because now you know what to pay for it. Go start the process again. Start going down through your tentative list, the, the watch list, getting rid of as companies as fast as you can get rid of them and then grudgingly put another one on your wish list. In a little time, you're going to have a wish list that's got plenty of companies on it, more than you're going to want to probably follow. So be very careful about about going through this whole process um, and making sure you want that company, that you're ready to buy that company. And the way I think about it before it goes on that wish list is, if I buy this company, do I want to own this for 10 years if I can't sell it, if there's no stock market? So you want to think about buying a company just exactly the way you buy that house down the road. If you could buy it on sale that you're going to rent out, you're not going to be thinking about selling it in two years if you're smart. You're going to think about it. I want to pay a price that just I'm, I'm fine for the next 10 years. I'm not flipping things. I'm not speculating. And that is going to be the things you invest in when the market starts to drop. Now, I hope that helps you guys. There's a lot there in this video. Love to hear from you. Does that make sense? You know, what are some companies that you're thinking about putting on your watch list? Maybe I can steal a couple. 
Leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure to follow up with you. And thanks for watching you guys. Now go play. If you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable for teaching you more about stock market watch lists, hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. And thanks for watching.